Hi, everyone. Welcome to Froggy Love, soon to be Lunatic Froggy. And Lunatic Dad's wonderful, beautiful show. We have not came up with it. Make sure you comment a name so we know what to call this. Today, we are interviewing the wonderful Lunatic Trucker. Go ahead, Scott. Introduce yourself. Well, as people already know, I'm... My name is Scott. Uh, I live in New York, and of course, I'm an over-the-road driver. I've been driving for since uh, 2008. That would give it 16 years. Uh, I'm married to a wonderful lady. Uh, go check her out, Cindy. Hopefully, I say it right. I always get the last two wrong, but Cindy Creation Diamond or Cindy Diamond's Creation I think it's less too wrong. Other than that, that's about explained to me, unless if you need anything else from me. I oh, know. We, need, we need a lot of information from you there, Scotty. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> so, so, you want my, bl want my blood type? <laughs> yes. So, the wonderful, the wonderful lunatic froggy <laughs> will begin this interview, and she will start it off, and then I will ask after that. So, guys, kick back, relax. Make sure you give it a uh, thumbs up for Scott Thornburg here up on YouTube. Go check out his channel and everything else. He's a fellow trucker. And, hey, listen, let's get it on, baby girl. It's now lunatic trucking or trucker. See, I'm already, I'm already corrected. Okay. <laughs> so, Scott, what does it feel like to be an over-the-road truck driver? Well... It, what I feel, how I feel like it, I I enjoy it going to all these different places um, and sightseeing. But yeah, it does get tiring. But you know what? Like they say, and it's it is true with me. Once it's in your blood, it's hard to get out of. Um, my how how I got into it. Well, I'm kind of basically. Um, Taken after my grandfather's steps. He used to be a piggyback. As people don't know what a piggyback is, it's where you'll see him going down the road hauling other trucks up on the, you'll see him stacked up two, two, three. Once in the gray blue moon, you might see it four, but that's very slim. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, well now that you answered that so thoroughly, and his name is Scott Thornburg, a.k.a. Lunatic Trucker, a.k.a. my brother. Now, for my question that is to you, to you, Lunatic Trucker, I would like to know, has trucking ever gotten in the way of your marriage? No, it, we, there's been times she, uh, she gets aggravated because of being lonely. But she she deals with it because she knows what we go with and go. She knows what how what the lifestyle is, I should say. But on that, it's, our marriage hasn't got weakened or nothing. We just we just work things out. Have you ever thought about being a same day trucker? I have, and. It probably will be um, within 10, 15 years when my body's like, okay, enough of being over the road. But there has been thoughts right now just thinking about doing where I'm home daily. Good answer. Good answer. Scott, I would like to ask you, uh, has trucking been beneficial to you or has it been sometimes uh, too costly sometimes where due to the fact since you're an over-the-road truck driver and you are held accountable for all the costs and everything, has there ever been some weeks where it's slower and you actually had to pull out of a savings or anything to keep the truck rolling? It, yes, I have, especially... Um, We'll, we'll go with right when I started being an owner-op. 
because that's been up and down. Um, when I first became an owner, uh, I was doing, I was actually doing really good. I had, I'm not going to say exactly how much, but it'll be a roughly estimate in my escrow, which I have explained before, but we'll probably, I'll probably end up having to explain later again, but that's all right. Um, I had like just about four or 5,000 cent in the escrow. Because the devil, I call him, I name my truck the Devil in Black, as a lot of people already know. Um, she's been, she did good for, for the two years while I was paying the truck off. And then right when, right after I got the truck paid off, she gave me a little hiccup. I've, where I basically had a just about empty my escrow out. That's why I call it my savings because everything else goes towards my hot, my bills. But she gave me a little hiccup where I basically drained that out. It, on that, it's after that there, it's been a rough go, but it's been beneficial. Okay. So if that, if that's what you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that was what he was asking. So, I have you thought about bringing your wife with you? I know she did earlier, have I, but have you thought about it again so that way you guys can really correlate the relationship? Yes, I have. But the only issue with that, though, because there's been times I... I I would love to have her to come out. It's so I got someone in here because I, of course, I love her, of course, and plus we can spend more time, and and plus we can. It's a lot better for us to communicate instead of over the phone. But it's just, it's just now that with her job, it'll be kind of hard. She put because all she would have to, there. yeah, especially the way how she moved up. I'll say I'm not gonna say details because that's that would be on her interview. I don't know if you asked her about okay. any of that, but okay. Now I want to ask you this question: When when you stop at a truck stop and everything else, and you have to lay over, which means guys, he's out of hours and he's got to rest and sleep and everything else. Can you ever tell me is there one of your most scariest moments when you came to his truck stop, went to sleep, and woke back up? Can you ever tell me uh, anything that anything that has been very scary to you? Or something you have witnessed at a truck stop that you swear that you would never want to see again? To be honest, not at a truck stop. Honest God, not at a truck stop. But I have witnessed while I was driving. Because yeah, I was down in, all right, I was down in Texas. I believe I had told you guys, but that's all right. I was down in Texas. Well, they had the, because Texas on their interstate, they got the freeway and then they got the service road that runs along with it. I, so while well, they had the freeway closed for construction, I can't remember because it's been several years ago. Well, I was coming across, I seen these cars just sitting there on the side. The next you know, I seen the truck laying on the side. Well, the thing I, like I said, I really hope I don't see it again. There was the driver passed away. Mm. And I, re, and that's the thing. It's right now, even talk about it, it's giving me shivers. Mm. It's just something that I hope, I hope and pray to God I don't ever see again. I, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Uh, I have yep. PTSD from seeing something like that, so I totally get it. Yep. yep. Now, Scotty, you know damn well I'm a paranormal channel. Have you seen anything paranormal happen out over the road? 
<laughs> Not on the road, but Cindy has seen stuff, <laughs> especially with the, at this new house. Oh yes. Well, I won't say just Cindy. I have two. Oh, really? Because, because I keep down the hallway. I keep seeing like there's something moving down at the end of the hallway. Cindy's Cindy kept asking me, "What are you looking at?" I was like, "There's some down there. Is one of the dogs over there?" She, she's like, "No, they're in the kitchen." And because we got a crate for them for when she goes to work, we put them in the crate. She, they're they're in, they're just laying in the crate. I'm like, "Are you sure?" She's like, "Why?" I was like, "There's. I swear to God, I see something down at the end of the hallway." And let me guess, you get to the end of the hallway and there's nothing there. Right. When she looks, there's nothing there. But it's just something that catches you right at the corner of the eye. Hmm. Wow. That's you, you, you might need a priest or an exorcism in your home, buddy. Just want to let you know that. You and then, just need sage. And Cindy, uh, well, let's say I forgot what she was doing. But there was a, the knife was just laying on the table. It fell off the table, blade facing down, handle sticking up. Whoa. Mm. Yeah, you definitely need some type of cure up in that house. And buddy. I'm not going to say when that happened, though. Uh, uh, we I'll, won't mention I'll, that part. Right. I'll gladly come help you fucking save your house. It ain't no issue. I know how to do it. I have enough people up that way that could come save your house professionally. Okay, the next question I got for you, Scott. When, while, what was the most, let's say, exhilarating or hardest thing you've ever had to do in trucking? And I want to get into that a little bit, what I mean by exhilarating, something that made your heart pump like, you know, like really fast, like something that you had to react or or things, something in which you have done in trucking that you don't really ever want to have to do again. Well, it's not what I did the other day. Yeah, I was in a backup. But after we got freed the other day, uh, See, of course, I pay attention. I seen the left lane already on the brakes because I forgot. I can't remember what the oh they had a construction. The left lane was closed. Well, there was a tanker in front of me. I still had plenty of distance to react, but he did. He practically had a slam on his brakes and hit the right shoulder. I thought he was going to rear end that trailer. I was like, please do not rear end that trailer because if he load up. She, mm -hmm. I might not even be here if it explodes. Well, thank God you are. Yep, that's why I keep my distance where I my where I know my my breaking distance. Okay, now there is a myth that truckers look down into car windows to see if people are what people are doing because they get bored on the road. What is the stupidest thing you've seen somebody doing while on the road? <laughs> oh, Lord. You really want me to go through and try to remember everything. Just There's just, so much stuff. Just off the top of your head. The stupidest thing? Yes. I'm glad you're not Stupid. interviewing me. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad, you can ask answer next. Oh, God. No. Um, <laughs> the main stupidest thing, what I know everyone will catch yourself doing, and yeah, don't get me wrong, I've done it too. Text and drive. Oh, shit. Oh, I that's thought you were going to say something totally different. We were oh, waiting my. for the goose, the juicy, juicy, goosey details mm. of like somebody fucking getting roadhead going down the road. Yes. Oh, I've seen that. Why did you and, say that in the first place? Why did you say that? We and plus, wanna... I, I kind of glanced at this one car. 
Because of course it's 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 in our blood to look down just to make sure see what they're doing so we can know what they're doing so we can know exactly if we what we got to keep eye out for in case something does happen. I seen someone uh, masturbate. Me too. I I think I think every truck driver in the world can all say that they have seen some type of pornification mm-hmm. or some type of something happening in vehicles. But I I have seen where a person they claim to broke on the side of the damn road and everything else. And this is a true story, even though the same my interview. But I pulled up behind them and everything because I thought you know it was cold and everything else. I get up to the damn window, they're all fogged up. I knock on there. I'm thinking, well, maybe no one's in there. A damn woman goes ahead and opens it up, and she's fucking butt naked. He's butt naked. I'm like, oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I actually that came upon that. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> and that that was something in which that's why you kind of made me smirk when you said text messaging. I'm like, if that's the most you've ever seen, buddy, uh, wow, you still got more years to go in truck driving. <laughs> I was trying to keep it PG a little bit. We you never guys. keep it PG up on this, okay? I know. <laughs> No, we we just want true facts. We want true facts. We want to know. All right, the next question I got for you, Scott Thornburg, a.k.a. Lunatic Trucker. Guys, make sure that you guys, again, give that thumbs up on this video. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to Lunatic Trucker, my brother from another mother. Okay, the question next I got is when you decided to get into trucking, what were you doing before trucking? Be, your job that you had before and how has trucking changed your life what I, okay yeah we'll start with what i was doing before truck i was working at a plant it's uh, called wellington making car parts for the big three it's, it was a stamping plant but then i got wrongfully discharged from there and uh, no, I'm sorry. no, 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 never mind. Never mind. They, they try to blame something on me, which it wasn't my fault. But anyways, and now you made me sidetrack. What was the second part again? I'm sorry. What were you doing before trucking? I just answered that. But well, there was another part. The other part was how has trucking changed your life? <sighs> How it, it it practically changed everything because well let's put it this way yes like I said I'm taking I'm basic basically took after I don't like keep looking back there and think I got trained but I basically take it after my grandfather's steps but it it basically changed um I can't really explain, but it changed a whole lot in my life. It's like a whole complete different lifestyle. Did you did did it give you more freedom than working a nine to five? Oh yeah, because I don't have I don't have no one constantly. Well, some companies you do, but like what I'm in. Well, when I first started, I did have because of training. That plus they had. They was uh, forced to dispatch and be blah, 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 be there on time and everything. But now I don't have no one looking over my shoulder or nothing. That's the freedom I like about it. And then, like I said before, I like the open roads. Is it? Yeah, I'm, some of the questions, I'm, I don't think I'll answer specifically what you're looking for but if not just let me know no you're, you're hitting everything right on the head actually I'm, I'm very happy that we're doing this interview because uh the people who are going to watch this and everything else gives the insight of an over-the-road truck driver and i'm actually honored to have you as part of our show froggy and dad and scotty too hot i oh, guess uh, that lunatic Dad, get your head out of your ass. It's a damn lunatic dude. trucker. Yeah, that too. I'll, I'll eventually get it. Remember what I said? I just called you Froggy, and it's actually lunatic Froggy. Hello. <laughs> now, can I add one little thing to that? You yes. sure can. Did I thought it was? Did I? 
being a driver thought it was going to be like how it was? No. Because I thought it would be a whole lot more money into it, but, but it's not because us drivers, we don't, we don't get as much respect as what we should. We get underpaid and everything. To a certain degree, it all depends on what type of trucking you get into, and it also depends upon what company you work for and yeah. everything else. That's why, like, being over the road, I, I've said it a million times on other times we've talked about being over the road, the cost and everything else, the fuel, uh, your tags. I mean, just the whole nine yards, having the maintenance on the truck and everything else, that that gets costly, big time, especially tires and all this other stuff. I mean, but me being a local driver and working for an outstanding company i i don't accrue the same cost as you do so mine is basically straight profit yeah. when i'm in the truck so that is one big difference is that it will eat into the profitability of the truck in which you make compared to say a local driver like dad who's just monday through friday so right <clears throat> the next question uh, i've got for you oh go ahead go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead but I'll, I'll, I'll say it after your but answer. After I answer your question. Uh oh. The uh, next question. I, uh oh. Sorry, guys. We we've got, we've been interrupted by the what do they call that? Uh, the internet. Yeah, the internet. Sorry, damn internet. Eh, should be free anyway. You shouldn't have to pay for it. Anyway, right. The, the next question I got for Scott when have has being in trucking between you and your wife would you say that that far as wanting a lot of children that trucking has interfered with that Ooh, tough subject no it hasn't but it's it's this i don't know it's you don't have to answer. It really it. hasn't. Oh, uh, it really hasn't. Okay. Because even when I first started, I, I've been we've been trying, but then okay. as years go by, it's like mm -hmm. we had some struggle spots, and then we're like, well, mm -hmm. my thing is, why bring a child in if you can't if you're not a hundred percent um stable mm -hmm. where you can raise it right 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 <clears throat> that was that was a very touchy one you know that it was so now go ahead now what i was going to say earlier for anyone that does want to go in trucking yeah there's truck companies with schools but if you got the credit or the money it's better to do it at at a um i said the name earlier Technical at a trade college. school yeah college or trade school and then get quite a few years under your belt a couple good years under your belt and then the best the if you if you want hard working and good money the best place is oil fields mm. right mm. i actually had a friend down here that um he was working the oil fields and he was making like five grand a week mm. just running oil fields oh yeah next question i got for you uh scott um how many injuries and if any if any have you sustained while being in trucking and has trucking physically put some type of physical strain upon your limbs or body can you get expound on hey, before, actual, that we just before don't before before we do that i need to pause real quick we're back that was we're Jordan. back all right now well i'm kind of chocolate about this you guys are probably going to laugh at it and call me an idiot about the because i had one one injury well i won't call it an injury but but it kind of is but it didn't really affect me too much my dumb ass, excuse my French, I was down in Florida. Florida, they have um, um, agriculture stations. 
Well, I had a load of oranges. Well, they wanted just to go in and look at the paperwork. Well, I had to go on the side of the trailer and grab the paperwork they needed. Well, instead of climbing out the right way, well, what did I do? I just landed the top and I broke my first hole. Basically, I got. Uh, we missed half of that because you went. Uh, yeah, you went robotic. Oh. Again. Yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Okay, as I was saying, where, where did it end? Yeah, I'll just start from the beginning of that. Am I Go still ahead. good? Yeah. yeah no, you sound right. beautiful, beautiful. All right, because my bars is down low right now, so that's why I asked. Um, Florida, they got the, we call them egg station, but the actual name is agriculture station, where they got them at, in Florida. Well, I had a load of oranges, I believe. They wanted uh, some paper off of one of the pallets. I climbed up in the trailer, and my dumbass, instead of jumping down, getting down the way I should have, I jumped from the top of the trailer down on the floor and broke one of my toes. That's about oh. the only injury I had. Good thing you didn't break like a. It hasn't really. But no, I'm yeah, not... I'm surprised. I'm not just talking about injury. I'm talking about the stress and the strain of being a truck driver. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Okay, go ahead. Get it. Uh, get at yep. it. Get at it. Get stress at it. Stress wise, it is extremely, it does get extremely stressful. Uh, not so much the traffic wise because we deal with traffic, but the stress comes with, comes from dispatches and the brokers. Because they always want you to rush, rush, rush. And it gets extremely stressful. And it does put, it does take some stress, it puts some stress on you. Okay. Uh, as far as your body wise, I'm saying, uh, you know, getting in and out of the trailers, up and down of the tractor and everything else. A lot of people fail to realize that the amount of weight that it takes to get out of a tractor and everything else. Remember, your body weight times two when you're coming out of a tractor and some of these young kids and everything else they just jump right out because they got the spring in their bodies and everything else but as you get older you know have you uh sustained like arthritis i mean in any parts of your body or you know that that's basically what i want to find out is how trucking physically just not getting hurt just by doing it this long has took a toll on your body oh now there is it my issue is my back from because before because when i was born i was born with scoliosis i was so too, way too young for them to um do surgery so it does put a good beating on my back where when i do these flat beds People laugh at me and say, why it takes you so long? I say, because my freaking back. And then it takes a little bit for it to get in. Now, then for a while there, I'll have to, it, it sucks climbing in and out of trucks and trailers. And then my weight, this, my weight, we won't talk about my weight. Uh, we can see it on That's, camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, at least you can cover up your double chin with a beard, okay? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we've discussed what in, the injuries and the toll on your body. I want to know about mentally, the toll it takes on you mentally, being a trucker, being away from your wife, the stress of not knowing, all of that. How does it toll on you mentally? <laughs> mentally, mentally, oh Lord. It's, let's see, how can I say this? I'm trying to Men... say it however you need to say it, honey. Let 
let's come back to that question. I'll think about it while I'm answering other questions. That's okay. perfectly fine. I understand that's a hard question because people normally don't think mentally. And people normally think, oh, it's your truck driver. That's the easiest job. But what they don't understand is the mental toll of what's going on at home. Is she okay? Oh, yeah. Paying the focus a- to that road 24-7. Uh, you always being on alert around your surroundings. By the time you, you're headed home and you know you're headed home, there's almost like a sigh of relief. Like, I get a couple days to relax. Yeah, it, uh, you just about pinpointing it because there's times when I'm out on the road, Cindy needs stuff done, and it aggravates me because she's at home taking, uh, taking care of all the stuff that she can do what she can do. And then if something major happens, it's like it it kind of b- bothers me because I can't help her. For example, um, let's see, how long ago was this? It was about four, four months ago in a new house. Our land basically live. We live basically kind of like a mountain, kind of like because there's none but rocks underneath our ground. Well, one of the boulders broke. Uh, we got a line that goes from our pump to the well. As I did a video because I thought it was my water pump the right. whole time that took a crap. Right. But but before I went home, be home, Cindy. I don't know how long she went without water. Because and it's that. it's just because of that. It's just because I was like, okay, I wish I could be there to help her, but I can't. Right, if, which is a pain in the ass. And that's part of the mental toll. And I hate to say it, but being your friend, I can literally see the mental toll of when you first get out there, you're laughing, you're joking, you're talking, but as the days tick by, I notice you get quieter and quieter, and you're, it's whatever, whatever. I think I'm going yeah, to cause, and, Yeah, because it's just a lot of stress that builds up in my head. Stress. Right. And that's why I wanted to bring that to attention, because a lot of people who are over-the-road truck drivers have that stress. So yep. if you get a crabby ass truck driver, nine chances out of ten, it's because X Y Z happened and they can't do nothing about it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this question, Scott. When, when you finally get home, when you finally get home, what is the first thing you do to Cindy? And I'm not talking about any craziness. I'm saying the first thing you do. When, when you come home and everything else and she opens up that door, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel good, but it, I know she's more relieved because I'm home and nothing happened to me on the road. Right. And then, then it makes me, okay, I'm home. I'm there. I get to help her out on stuff that needs to be done around the house i get aggravated with her yeah i i get over aggravated with her when i'm home and i do regret i do regret that a lot but it's just thing it's just way how i go with it it's it it's not right but i just get aggravated but then in the the long run though in the long run, we do we 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 enjoy each other's time when I'm home. We'll go out places or whatever when would we have say, the money. Would you say part of the reason that you get aggravated when you get home is because you're alone in your truck for two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, so you're not used to having somebody like right there with you for all the time? Good question. Yes, and then, yeah, because, and then also, it's 
stuff that now also it's what stuff I gotta do when I get home that needs to be done. I get aggravated because I gotta do it because it needs to be done and it has to be done right away. It's not that she wants me to do it right away. It's just because I got to do it. But there's been times where I got to do stuff right away or times I get to go home. Then I'll sit down and I'll be lazy for the first day. Then the, then after that, I'll just do all my, I call it honey to do list. Oh, I got, I'm sorry. I got to plug my phone in before my phone dies. Oh, yeah. you're totally fine. Um, well, in part, that would fall back into thinking about being an over uh, local truck driver where you're home every night, just like taking the Walmart roads. Because I remember you said that when you are you take the Walmart runs and only the Walmart runs, you're home every night. No, close not at home every night. night. I'll be home more often. I'll be home more often than I would be with over the road. Right. And, and now, by you being over the road for a long extended period of times, again, I will go back to asking you the question. How has that affected your marriage? It it, you can't say it for a hasn't. while there it kind of I'm not saying it it hasn't no it's put it put a lot of stress in our marriage it kind of we kind of did pull apart at first well after first but then we worked it over and now it's kind of our love is more is stronger than what it was beautiful answer because so we just work, we it. work things out. Right, which is understandable. Uh, I mean, I dated an over-the-road truck driver. I was married to his ass, unfortunately. And it did pull us apart because I'm not coming home the, you know, and just horrible. Um, so, what would you say... The best part of trucking is best part of trucking. Yes, it's the the just going all these different places and the view. Can can we can we hold on for one quick second? I gotta yeah, I'll see this. It. Okay. Uh, my next question I got for you, Scott, being an over the road truck driver, which I do not experience being a local truck driver, when you go out and you know you're going to be out so many days and everything else, how many, and now this is not a crazy question, how many pairs of pants, shirts, underwear, socks, everything, do you have to like bring a big suitcase or something for your travels throughout all that time, or is it very limited? I keep about a week of clothes because, uh, of course, I know you've probably seen it. There's truck stops that does have washer and dryers. So there's there was one time with one company, I actually stayed out. I didn't even, yeah, this is what really stressed me out. Not able to see, I stayed out for six months straight. They even see Cindy only twice a year. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah, I no. did that before. I will never do that again. Oh, I would have boot scooted boogie right out of that whole thing. Yeah, I did. Wow. And that wow. was with a company wow. there in Dallas, Texas. I won't say the name, but probably far you got used to probably already know which one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Dallas, Texas. I'll just say bird. Mm -hmm. There's a bird. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. So and I really want to hone in on this because I know that you do your Walmart runs up there. How easy would it be for you to tell your dispatcher that you only want to do X month? You only want to do these loads. Good question. Well, I try to, but then when they do give me that, it's like, hey, Scott, we need you to do some. And then I have a hard time saying no. 
except for mm -hmm. let's say today because they were they was going to have me go from new york to conklin it's only like about 80 or 90 miles loaded and then come back they was only going i'm going to say this they was only going to pay me 150 dollars. i told them no because i'm just going to spend more than that in fuel you sure are wow wow mm. that that is shocking to me that is shocking to me next question i got for you lunatic trucker i want to know and i want you to be 100 percent open minded to this if they told you that you had to do a certain run and it was your wife's anniversary and your anniversary and you were planning on being back but they said no you have to do this or you lose your job which one do you take that's a good good one mm -hmm. i never had that happen but if they do what i i wait a minute i take that back i never well they never said i would be fired but they said we need this load and we and you're the only available driver i actually what we'll do is me and cindy will sit there and i was like well let me call my wife and see because we already got plans for what this is not just anniversary just holiday holidays anniversary and then me and her will talk i'll call her talk her then she's like well why don't you because we if we need the money she'll be like well why don't you go ahead and do it then we'll just do it when you get back i'm like all right but i get look give it up to her let her choose okay okay because so i don't because i don't want to uh let's see how can i say this i don't want her to get mad or break her heart because she's like well we had this and blah 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 but that's why i always run it by her first very good so what i'm hearing is you leave it up to her on the basis of what you do I, about 99 percent of the time i do which means that you have a lot of open communication in mm -hmm. your relationship yeah. Being an over-the-road truck driver, do you believe that communication is the most important part of uh, the relationship? Or do you believe that oh, having an open communication like that is only mildly important in your relationship being an OTR? Open relationship. Open communication. Yeah. Communication, you, you, communication you, you relationship. Want an open relationship, buddy. Just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> or open community. Uh, that's why I was stopped and then put a communication. Open you. communication. It's a hundred percent hands down because because if you don't communicate re, communicate with each other, it it, it gets it, it does get bad. But me and her, we, we basically have open, we communicate on a lot of stuff. We have a lot of open, so a lot of times it's not so much, we might not call each other, but it'll be a lot of texts, texting. Or unless, because as you guys know, and probably a lot of people know, when I get, I'm the same when I call Cindy. Hold on got another day to call um i i'll sit there and uh, cindy cindy she has hung up on me because it would be done but air mm -hmm. because of the simple so that's why i said you, you get a lot right mm -hmm. that's but then when it comes to texting i'll go away on texting right right but should you be texting and driving? No, this I shouldn't. But like I have said, we're all in it. In it. <laughs> yeah. You never yeah, know who's watching this. I already, 
they have voice to text now that all you do is literally oh then... let's pause this real quick i think the broker tried to call me I... all right so uh again i just want to let everybody know who are watching this beautiful simulcast that is the beautiful love lunatic froggy and we got lunatic trucker and lunatic dad we are talking about trucking and the effects of uh, it is on a trucker and over the road truck driver and the things in which they go through how it affects their family lives how it affects their personal lives and everything else so i'm gonna go ahead and get into this next question for you okay lunatic trucker now yep the question i have for you how many times if ever if ever do you change the mattress that you sleep on how many times have you changed it since or bought a new one since you've owned that truck since i this truck here will say i haven't changed it yet but i am looking forward to changing it um soon because i want to get the i need to get me more of a comfortable mattress how much does something like that run? Because even Lunatic Dad does not know. How much does something like that run if you were to have to change the mattress <laughs> for inside of a truck? The one I want, it'll cost me about eight nine hundred dollars. Holy sh! Wow, wow! Did you yeah, just they're say about eight nine hundred. Yeah, they're about the it's a uh, it's about that thick. Because I gotta have something better for my back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. So yeah, I wait. No, not eight nine hundred. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. About six hundred. It's a couple hundred off, but that's still that's a at a truck price. stop though. But that's at a truck stop. I don't know right. how much if I would have went. So say I went to a mattress store, mattress place, and bought one new. I don't know how much that is. Now hmm. my question is. Going off of that, they have in truck stops those purple cushion things that you can put like in your chair and whatnot. Have you thought about getting a couple of those so you could put um, them in your chair and then also on your bed so that way it's a little bit more cushion? I don't, I honestly don't think I would really like them. I, I, I felt them, but then I felt them at, at the truck stop, but I don't think I'd really care for it. I know what you're talking about, but I don't think I would really care for it. Hmm. I don't know why, though. Change. How, how, has, how has being over the truck road truck driver, when you get home, has it uh, developed any type of sleep apnea or sleeping problems? Uh, due to the fact is that your schedule is so unpredictable. It does. Because the it's not, I don't know if it's a sleep apnea, but it's a sleeping pattern because I get, my mind gets set on, okay, I guess I got like, I sleep like about six, seven hours a night. And when I do get home, that's about basically what I sleep. Cause I'll get up, I I'll even get up before Cindy gets up, and I'll go to bed. I go to bed about midnight when I'm home, maybe one o'clock in the morning, then get up about six, seven o'clock, or unless I'm ex extremely ex exhausted. Hmm. Hmm. The only reason why I question it is 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 because me being uh like a uh you know local truck driver, which means I'm home every day is that i got a set time i go to bed set time i eat set time everything and i i just was wondering how does that uh affect uh over the road drivers you know like even your eating patterns and everything else i mean it, it it's like totally night and day between an over the road driver and a local truck driver and i commend you for being able to handle all that i really do i mean lunatic truckers is unbelievable what you do for this nation and getting that phrase coast to coast and i just want to say I'm a brother in arms, and I, I thank you for everything you do. Thanks. Now, he cut out what had talking about. Um, okay, you cut out because I know you cut out because I had someone try to call me, and I told my it was one of my friends. I was like, I'll call him back. No, you you didn't cut out at basically, all. Basically. No, I said you cut out. You, you cut, cut out, out on my end. 
Um, basically, what he was saying was basically saying thank you for all of the phrase. Yeah, I got and, that part, but the question, what was the question? There was no question in it. There was no question. That was just me oh. giving you respect from truck driver to oh, truck driver. Okay, that's why. Okay, thank you. I might not be a truck driver, but without you, we ain't getting our eggs. Shit, not just me, dad anything. as well. Dad as well. All of these truck drivers deserve yep. some props and respect because but that, literally they're <laughs> hauling, they're taking time away from their lives, their wives, their kids to haul your stuff to the store. Mm -hmm. That's 100%. Talking about right. stuff to the store, do you get goodies? Yeah, come on, come on. Tell me what, tell me when, when they throw something out. Come on, you got to have a story, juicy one on that one. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Bobby already knows this, this one. Yes, I, I still do. got a little bit left. We're being exposed. You were supposed to share them with me. Well, let's say we we won't go. We won't like he's here, but the other one's already gone. Well, you better put a bag in the mail and mail it to me. Oh. Rice Krispie treats. Oh boy! Oh, Rice Krispie uh, eggs. No wonder Froggy's like yum yums. <laughs> <laughs> Get in my belly. There, and then there was one time, there was one time I had like I don't know how many cases, about four or five cases of chicken. I took really? home. Yeah, and then I ran across another driver. They rejected his whole load of dog food. And I had my whole sleeper packed full of dog food bags. Oh, I wish I would have met you somewhere. I oh. wish I would have met that <laughs> trucker, goddamn. My Lord. Yes, it, it does get sometimes, you know, truckers, we are like that with each other. If we got something that's got to get thrown out or whatever the case may be, we, oh, we lost the Scotty's back. Foods oh, up. Man. Hold on. There. That's all right. That's all right. But yes, it's sometimes us truck drivers, we actually do look to another truck driver. Hey, you want this? You want that? Speaking of that, I actually got two bar soaps of Irish Spring and two big things of Colgate toothpaste. Just just yesterday, that's why I asked you that question and everything, is because dad actually, a truck driver, gave it to me. He was like, I got a whole damn shitload. You want some of this? And I was like, yeah, okay. And the only thing it was, was because the box was crushed. And I'm sitting there like, there's nothing wrong with toothpaste, but the box was crushed and they can't sell it. So they right. reuse yep. certain parts of the load and everything. But, and they can wow. do that, which once again, all of you think about it, they're getting paid for this load, right? Now the store is rejecting part of that load because it was crushed or whatever. Does that affect your pay? Great question. Nope. If it is found to be negligent on your part from overspeeding into a curve or overspeeding, which altered the shifting of that freight, and it was your fault why that freight got damaged, is that then your fault? I never had that. I never had that, so I can't really answer if they um, put the pay on you, but I never actually had no issued where it was my ne uh, negligent or anything like that. So I can really answer that. Okay. Because I can't answer that neither. I'm a local driver. I'm not held accountable for shit, but... <laughs> right. Hmm. And I... No. I want to get into the deep, the bad truckers. Oh, and I know every truck driver knows at least one bad trucker. One? And I'm not talking <laughs> driving. I'm talking people who steal the freight. Oh. oh, oh. Have you ever ran across somebody who was stealing the freight? Glad this is his interview. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I really <laughs> haven't, haven't, I really haven't personally seen it, but I have heard stories of it. Believe it or not, it is more commonplace in trucking that that occurs. And, mm -hmm. but, but how, how that gets prevented 
is that a lot of companies will go ahead and have a seal tracker and everything else where when you're leaving out, there's a set seal, the guard's going to verify it on the paperwork. And then when you arrive at your destination, you cannot have the same type of seal or whatever. If it's an altered seal and you did not get permission uh, and, or explain why that seal was removed, you're in a whole heap of shit. Because if anything comes up missing on, on, on my company, if I if that it's a different uh, seal or whatever, and no one, they can't document it, and there's stuff missing out of that trailer, even though I'm a local driver, I am held responsible for what's inside that, that yep. load. Now, I know there is a way to bust the seals off without busting them so you can reuse them. I've never heard of it. I never heard My of it. My ex used to do that shit all the time. And this... which is why I brought it up because, again, I was in the position where I witnessed somebody literally he can't be charged now unless you're going to go up to heaven so it is what it is but I witnessed him go steal uh pop the little tabby thingy mm -hmm. the seal but underneath it where they push it through mm -hmm. now remember this is back in the old days you just push the little lever down and pull it out and you can reuse the seal he he would go steal TVs and everything else, and I'm like, dude, no. And that was part of the reason that I left the whole entire relationship was because of the fact he was stealing freight. But now the, the, way, the way they combat that is that the security officer comes out and everything else, and they're going to the seal, and they'll pull on it. They won't take it off right away. I know the way my company is. They'll pull on it. If that thing just comes off like butter, they're like, oh, wait a minute, this seal was not sealed and everything else. See, when I get a load or anything else, or whatever the case may be, I must sign that the seal is intact and everything. So, I mean, there are certain mechanisms. I'm sure there probably is. You know, if the security guard doesn't even come out and check and truck drivers know that, hey, this security guy never comes out and check or whatever, just like do what you're talking about. I'm sure there is a lot of theft that's going on. I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show you an example. Zip ties. It's not it's just it's like a zip tie, but not quite. Because what they got, they got like ridges. All you gotta do is just slide it in. Huh. Slide in like this. So let's say this yeah, is a seal. Mm -hmm. Slide in, take something, snap it, cut it, pull the other part through, and then reseal it. Because a lot of security, they won't look at the end. They'll just look at the seal number. Right. And being a security guard at like I was, I watched so many people walk out there and not check the seal of the truck. And I'd go out there and check the seal. Well, the last security guard did do this. And I said, I don't care. I'm not them. I'm checking your seal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the more important ones had the bolt ones that you cannot replace. Right. Now, but the good thing about having those kind of seals is if it's preloaded. Now, because I have I admit I I've done the cut I done on those kind of seals, like I gave an example of just to make sure there's load bars or load load bars or load straps in there. Mm -hmm. But then I was Use the same seal, it's still the same seal number, and, and slide it back on. Which is next, understandable. <clears throat> next question I got for you, since we're talking about loads of a truck driver. Uh, if you are, you're allowed to check inside and everything to make sure it's loaded correctly and everything else. Have you ever gotten a load where it was top heavy? Top heavy? Yeah. Top heavy. The all I've not really too much. I probably once or twice maybe, but it's not really too much. It's you just all. If you were on the road, if you were on the road and you were making a real uh, a big curve and everything else by having a top heavy load, what could that possibly do as you're driving it? Yeah, you could easily roll over. It's just you just gotta you you don't want to go 
berserk around full speed or the speed limit around the curve because top heavy if it's if it's loaded top heavy when you go around a sharp curve that top is going to lean it will pull yes the next thing you know if you're going too fast it'll pull you right over hmm. what is the annual cost would you say for maintenance everything that an owner op OTR guy pays a year out of his pocket. What is the average? Now, I'm not asking you to show your taxes, but what is the average cost per year, would you say? Let's see. We'll say I probably this year because with my ser service, that's the thing that costs because you got to do that about it's about every three months we'll say even though it's every 30 miles but I average about two or three months depends how hard you run oh three times is 2400 yeah 2400 we'll say on the oil we'll say 3000 on the oil service and then it, it just varies depends on exactly what all you need need like say tires that's there is a that's one of the big eaters right there is the tires so you would well, say ba ba basically tanya tanya would have to work on the corner for an extremely long time she became a trucker oh i'm sorry it's an interview of you ah <laughs> lunatic dad's just messing around have a little bit of fun this is what happens when you're top heavy. I don't know you if you can see that. I could see it. Can I can't because I don't. Let me. You probably the viewers can, but viewers can't I can't see really see. We haven't uploaded this yet. <laughs> it's a it's a picture of a trailer flipped over. Yes. Top busted out. Mm -hmm. That actually happened when I was on, um, when I was uh, at the bacon factory. Um, here's a better picture of it. Wow. Look at that, Scott. That's top of everybody. This and just yeah, sucks because I can't really see because I'm on my phone. It would be different if I'll, I was on the computer last Yeah, time. I'll just send you a picture of it. Tractor and trailer is literally on its side. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all you don't because, need to send it. All because somebody literally did not want to load it, right? Luckily, it was on a shag truck. The trailer, um, the guy heard it crack when he turned. And instant e uh, uh, ejected it as it was like he unhooked it as it was falling so the tr mm -hmm. shag di truck didn't go with it but the guy did lose his job mm. because yep. as a <laughs> shipping manager you should make sure your trucks are not top heavy mm -hmm. yep question so that's Scott. another oh, I'm sorry. when you're go when ahead. you're uh have, if you do haul hazmat i don't know if you're hazmat certified mm -hmm. Or if no. you ever had to. Okay, no. Now, the reason why I was going to ask that question, I could answer it. But, you know, because uh, hazmat drivers, one, everybody knows they make more than just regular truck drivers. Okay, if you're carrying hazardous materials, you get paid extra for the load. I just want to know, being an owner-op, if they paid you extra for carrying hazardous materials. Because you're assuming more risk. Yeah, I can't answer that because that's the agreement what me and Cindy agreed with. Because agreed with me getting my cdl is i do not do no hazmat loads okay okay I, but there I, is a there is an extreme limit that i am allowed up to i think it's a thousand pounds thousand one hundred thousand yeah yeah mm -hmm. i knew it was like a thousand pounds yes sir yes sir all right uh i just all want right. what go ahead i was gonna say we should wrap this up here mm-hmm any final words to uh, the lunatic trucker? Any final words? 
Uh, thanks for coming out. Hopefully you guys enjoy this interview slash podcast and glad to be on board. And please like share subscribe to our one and only favorite froggy and then lunatic dad as well and uh, subscribe to me um yeah you will see okay let me let's add one more quick thing <laughs> go ahead <laughs> hey why not why not let's go now we're talking about my channel for okay. anyone who wants to know about my channel who never seen my channel but i know there's probably has but majority of our viewers seen my channel. I, I'm, I, with my channel, it's basically a lot of driving. You'll see a lot of just to show everyone about what it's who doesn't go able to able to go out and explore the the country. There's a lot of things that you will see is good. Don't get me wrong. There is there is. But that's about what basically I'm trying to keep with my channel. And then there's some stuff at the house I'll do, like do it yourself, kind of repair it. There's, I do got a video of that, <laughs> a live video on that one. We won't go <laughs> that there. <laughs> and then I, and then if you do go over to my channel, you will see quite a few videos. I do got some, a lot of videos that I don't really talk much, but as Chris, the breakfast paranormal and froggy and dad says they are trying to break me free from that i am starting to do more talking it's just coming coming to it slowly i just wanted to give that up there oh very good it's we, your interview, we, buddy. we love hearing about your channel so all right any part of words lunatic dad yes I, i've most definitely got some final words i just want to say to lunatic trucker and to my beautiful daughter, Lunatic Froggy, I just want to say this has been an outstanding inter interview. I'm hoping that people learn the life of an over-the-road truck driver. As it, if it was not for them and myself, who's a local truck driver, you would not even be wearing clothes right now. I'd also yep. like to say outstanding, Scott. I just want to tell you, brother, this was very enjoyable for me as we are brothers in arms. As we always say in trucking, we're brothers in arms. And the only thing I will say, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share out Lunatic Froggy, make sure that you guys crush Scott's channel, okay? I'm going to also be putting this up on the My Community tab of the interview with Scott. Uh, Lunatic Froggy will go ahead and put down a link to his channel, and she'll pin it on the channel to go to his channel. So hopefully that you guys give him a little bit of love, because you know what? That man needs all the love he can damn get. Thank you, brother, for honoring us with your attendance here today. Anytime. All right, guys. Glad to do it. We appreciate everybody that comes in. I appreciate you, Scott, for coming and talking with us and getting down into the nitty-gritty about truck driving. It's not a bad career if you're a single man. If you're a married man, it does weigh on your relationship, as Scott and Lunatic Dad will tell you. There's now, can I interrupt you real quick on that part there? Yes. If you are married, make sure your spouse will agree with it. Because if not, it, it might be a rough road. Right. So... We thank you guys for coming out. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we love you all. Thank you for coming, and have a great day. Love you all. Bye. Bye.